Hello students, in this video we are going to learn class 7 basic science, first chapter reaping gold from soil, second part vegetative propagation. In the first part of this lesson we have learned about sexual reproduction. What is sexual reproduction? The formation of seedlings from seeds is by sexual reproduction. Now, today we are going to learn what is vegetative propagation. The formation of new plantlets from parts like root, stem and leaf is called vegetative propagation. Okay, so what's it? What's the difference between sexual reproduction and vegetative propagation? In sexual reproduction, the formation of seedlings is from seeds. In vegetative propagation, new plantlets are formed from parts like root, stem and leaf. So that is known as vegetative propagation. Now let us see the different types of vegetative propagation methods. First method is layering. Now let us see what are the steps included in layering. Select a branch of the plant from which sapling is to be produced. The branch must be pencil thick. The branches from the main stem are better. Peel off 1 cm of bark from the stem in a circular shape. So, here in the picture it is shown. We have to peel off 1 cm of the bark in a circular shape. And that branch must be pencil thick. So, that is the first step in layering. Now, what is the next step? Cover the peeled off part with a slightly moistened mixture of coconut fiber, soil and sawdust. After that, you have to cover the peeled part with a slightly moistened mixture of coconut fiber, soil and sawdust. It is clearly shown in the picture. After that, cover it with a polythene sheet. Tie both ends with jute twine. Wet it with enough water to retain moisture. After that, cover it with a polythene sheet. After covering it, we should wet it to retain moisture. Now, we should keep it for some days or some months. After that, what happens? Numerous roots will sprout within two months. Cut the branch and plant it in a pot. Till it is ready to be transplanted in the soil. Take care to plant the sapling in a suitable place. So after two months numerous roots will sprout there. You can see in the picture. Then you have to cut the branch and plant it in a pot. Okay. So this is the method of layering. And this method is known as air layer. We have seen the steps in layering. Now, let us see a video showing how layering is done. Okay.
Now we have seen in the video how layering is done. Now here are some examples for plants in which layering is done. Plants like rose, hibiscus, jasmine, cashew and sapota. These are some examples. Now next layering is also done on branches that grow close to the soil by bending the middle of the branch into the soil. Now layering can also be done in another manner. You can see in the picture there how they are doing that the branches which grow close to the soil are bent into the soil so that method is known as serpentine layering okay so by bending the middle of the branch into the soil this method is known as serpentine layering now we'll see the video of serpentine layering So we have seen about air layering and serpentine layering. Now apart from these two layering methods, there are so many other layering methods. We will just see the names of those methods. Compound layering, serpentine layering, air layering, mount layering, trench layering, drop layering and tip layering. These all are different type of layering methods. And here in our chapter, we need to study only about air layering and serpentine layering. Okay. Now, let us see some information related to layering. In that first one is, most of the plants can be grown this way. So, that is the one main factor. Most of the plants can be grown through this layering method. Second one. Plants formed from layering do not have a much lifespan as plants formed from seed germination. They will be of smaller size too. Now another one factor is these plants which are formed through layering will have only a short lifespan. Comparing to the plants formed from seed germination. Third point is they have qualities of the parent plant. So, they will be having the qualities of the parent plant. Next, if layering is done on diseased plants, new plantlets will also be infected. So, if we are doing layering on any diseased plants, the plantlets also will be diseased ones. Next point is, Flowering and fruiting of such plants are faster than those in plants formed from seeds. Now flowering and fruiting in plants, in such plants means in which layering is done, will be faster than those in plants formed from seeds. Next, through this method we can produce more saplings within a short period. So through this layering method, more saplings can be produced within a short period of time. Layered plants do not possess taproot system. So another one important factor in layering is layered plants do not possess the taproot system. Next they require more care and these plants on which layering is done require more care. 
so these are the informations related to layering and the points which are coming under layering so this is all about layering so we have learned about air layering serpentine layering and some factors related to layering okay so this is one method of vegetative propagation